Welcome to Grand RP, one of the best role-playing servers in the world. Today, we're going to be going over some of the basic information that all players should know while playing on these servers. We'll be going over some basic introductory stuff, how to join gangs, organizations, and some of the rules to follow. I hope this video helps you guys out, and trust me, you'll have a ton of fun playing on this server as long as you follow all the basic rules. With that said, let's jump into it while we start off at the hotel. So you spawned in for the very first time at the hotel in Grand Grand RP. You want to head on over to this elevator and make your way to the lobby. From there, you're going to talk to the receptionist at the front desk and you're going to flex your e-muscle to interact with her. You're going to want to click you want to reunite with your family. Make sure to join the Hells Angels family because that's my family. And then from there, continue the storyline quest. From there, you can turn around and exit out of the hotel. And in the top right hand corner of your screen, you will see a little quest. It won't say the exact same stuff that mine does, but it'll say exactly what you need to do. And that is what you're going to have to do to complete your beginner task in this city. There are five things that you need to do, starting off by going to a power plant and earning a couple hundred bucks, making your way to a post office to collect a package, get your driver's license, become an oil miner, and then sell the oil that you just mined. You're going to want to make your way over to this lady right here, and you're going to want to rent a scooter. It's not the nicest thing in the world, but it'll definitely get you from point A to point B. As I said, the first thing you need to do is make your way to the power plant located right over here, and start working as a power plant worker and start repairing some wires. From there, you're going to make your way to the post office, and collect a package afterwards. Once you're done that, as I said, you're going to be heading over to the licensing center and getting your driver's license. Once you arrive at the power plant, run into this circle right here and select get employed. You'll get put into your work uniform and you could start repairing some of the wires and you'll be earning some money. Currently, I'm a level three electrician, which means I can make even more money from doing electrical work. You'll be starting off by going over to these generators, just like these guys are right here and repairing the wires that need to be fixed. It's very, very simple and shouldn't take too long to do at all. And if you were wondering how much these jobs pay out, select my job. You could see electrician the job we're doing right now, the salary is currently low. But being a lumberjack or a potter has a high salary. If you want to work at one of those jobs, just click on it and click route to work. From there, if you look at your map, there will be a destination point set at the lumberyard or whichever location you selected. The salaries update every single hour between low, medium, and high, so then you guys can pick what you want to do to make the most amount of money when you first start the game. Once you earn that $100, head back to the circle and quit the job and make your way over to the post office and pick up your package. When you exit the power plant, there will be a lady standing here that you can fly your e-muscle on and you can rent another moped if you need to in case your rental already ended. If you want to, you can call a taxi by flexing your cane muscle to open the phone, selecting the taxi button, and then click call taxi, and then just describe exactly what you need. Then a taxi will come and pick you up. Just make sure you don't really move too much or else the call will be cancelled. From there, they will drive you to wherever you need to go, but it will cost a little bit of money. After you pick up your package at the post office, you're going to make your way over to the licensing center and get yourself a driver's license. Go and speak to this guy right here select driver's license. If you want to get a water transport license or an air transport license, you can get that here as well. It'll cost you $500 to take your driver's test and don't worry, you should still have money left over. From there, you'll spawn inside of a little mini Cooper. Now, before you start to test, flex your G muscle and then you want to select set a speed limit. Keep on clicking it until the speed limit is set to 90 kilometers per hour because if you go over 100 kilometers per hour, you will make an error. If you make three errors, you will not pass your driver's test. So always set it to that just in case so you don't need to worry about looking at the speedometer the entire time during your test. From there, just simply drive around the route and go through all the checkpoints and you'll arrive back at the licensing center and you will receive your driver's license. Now you're able to drive any street vehicle in the city. The license does expire after 30 days. So let's say you start making some money in the city and you don't want to take this test again. If you just head on over to the dark net, you're able to purchase a driver's license or a water transport license or an air transport license for a fee. You can also purchase vehicle scanners here, lock picks, people scanners, which you can use to steal cars cars, break open handcuffs, or search for people that have a bounty set on their heads. You can also purchase stuff for drug labs, and you can also purchase policeman papers to impersonate a police officer on the streets of Los Santos. Anything you purchase from the dark net will be delivered to the post office. Just head on over there and pick it up and you're good to go. From there, make your way over to the oil fields. Head on over to any of the oil wells and flex your e-muscle. At that point, you can choose between mining gasoline, solar, or kerosene. You're going to want to select gasoline, and then on these things right here, you just want to hold your mouse down on it, and then once the bar is full just like that, complete the three of them next to it, and then once you complete all of those, you will receive one barrel of gasoline. I believe for the beginner's quest, you need to get three of them, so once you do that, you're able to head to the buyer of raw materials, and you could sell them off for some money. Once you arrive, go and speak to the guy on the top of the steps, and you want to select, I want to look at the prices. From there, sell the gasoline, and these 
these prices will go up and they will go down and sometimes they will issue bonuses as well. You can take a look at all of this type of stuff in the Grand RP Discord under the resellers chat. Once you complete that, you have completed your beginner's quest, which is awesome, and you will be rewarded a free rat loader. It's not the best thing in the game, but at least it's not a scooter. If you want to, you can go and take a look at the car dealership, located right here on the map. This is where you can purchase practically any car in the game. You can also take them for test drives to see how they drive and see if it fits your style perfectly. Some of the cars you're not able to actually purchase and can only be won via the crates. If you want to check those out, flex your M muscle, go to shop, and then click containers with prizes. And you'll see all these really cool cars and a bunch of really cool clothes that you can get with grand coins. You could purchase those. One grand coin costs one dollar. Most of the stuff you could purchase in the shop menu will require some grand coins, so if you want to purchase them, you can. Every once in a while, the server will do promotions, giving out 15 free grand coins for playing for 4-5 to five hours per day. Just recently, they did it for an entire week, and everybody got a ton of grand coins completely free just for playing the game. Now don't forget, this isn't GTA Online. In GTA Online, you could do pretty much whatever you want. This is a roleplay server, so there are rules to follow. I will link the Grand RP Discord down below in the description so you guys can look them over. Trust me, you're going to want to look them over. Just because if you don't, and you start breaking these rules, you could face some serious consequences. Some of the basic ones, just being sent to Morgan, which is jail in Grand RP, and you will be in there for either a couple of minutes, up to about 3-4 to four hours. And if you start to break some more serious rules, you can get permanently banned from playing on any of the servers. Obviously those are like cheating and things things like that, so make sure you look them over. Right now, we're going to go over some of the basic rules that every single player in this city should be following. Let's start off with car ramming. Car ramming is when you take your car and start ramming into somebody else's car consistently for no reason whatsoever. If people catch you doing this, they will contact an admin. They will teleport to you to see if you're actually doing it, and if you are, you will be sent to De Morgan. You can see I got sent to De Morgan for 180 minutes, so this is something you definitely don't want to do. That is three hours you're going to have to spend sitting in De Morgan, and if you go AFK, the timer will end up stopping, which means you're going to have to be moving around and serve the time for your punishment. If you feel you were wrongfully punished or you want to report somebody that was doing that to you, head on over to the Grand RP forum, select the forum page, and once you select that, you will see a bunch of information. You want to head down to whichever server that you play on. For me, it's English server number one, and then head on over to the complaint section. We're going to be making a complaint against a player, and then once you do that, make sure you select rules for filing a complaint. If you do not follow the right structure, no matter what, it will not be accepted. So make sure you do everything correct, and then an admin will review it. And if they deem that what you said was true, they will then serve the punishment to whoever you reported, or maybe that person is you. I would also highly recommend that you guys get a body cam software that just records your screen and what is happening in your game. I use GeForce Experience and I think it is definitely one of the best in-game overlays you could use. A lot of them you're not able to use, like Streamlabs OBS, but there are a ton that you are able to use, and trust me, it is worth it to get this type of stuff because if you don't have it and you want to report somebody, they're going to ask for body cam. And if you don't have it, most likely, your report is going to be denied. And let's say you don't have body cam, but somebody else does of a situation that you were involved in, and they decide to report you on it, but you don't have body cam, you might end up getting screwed. Another rule is non-RP driving. Let's say somebody is chasing you, either somebody who's trying to rob you or a police officer trying to get you to pull over, and you decide to drive off the side of a mountain or drive off a cliff and go flying into the air. This is called non-RP driving or GTA driving, which is not allowed and you can get in a lot of trouble for this. There is a difference between off-roading and non-RP driving. If you are driving an off-roading vehicle, you are able to drive off-road, but if you're in a Lamborghini or a Bugatti Chiron and somebody sees you driving off the side of a mountain, that is clearly non-RP, unless you can make up a really good excuse of why you were actually doing it. Like maybe you wanted to do some Fast and Furious shit and you had a parachute and you didn't really care about the car anymore. But trust me, stay away from doing this or you can get in a lot of trouble. Another rule to follow is when you are being chased, and you know you are being chased. If you enter a green zone, and you will know you're in a green zone when it shows it in the top right hand corner just above where your money is, if you enter this area while you are being chased and you just chill there so then whoever is chasing you isn't able to kill you, you will get in a lot of trouble. Because when you are in green zones, nobody is allowed to shoot unless you are in a legal org. Literally, it scriptly will not let you shoot. So do not do this either if you are being chased. If you enter a green zone by accident, just keep on driving until you get out of it 
it and continue on with the RP scenario. Another important rule is RDM and DM. You are not allowed to kill players in the city for no reason. You're only allowed to kill people outside of the city or in the ghetto. You're also not allowed to rob people in the city either. You can get in a lot of trouble for that as well, along with dancing on their dead bodies or using your microphone and starting to spit on them, and you are especially not allowed to say anything about parents. If you start talking about people's moms or dads, you will be sent to De Morgan, receive a warning, or even get banned. So trust me, stay away from anything like this. Another rule that gets broken all the time is metagaming. You can get in a lot of trouble for this as well. Do you see the ID above this player's head? If you can only identify them because of that ID because you memorized it, that's called metagaming. You can get in a lot of trouble for that. The only way you should be able to identify them is because of what they're wearing, their voice, or you already know them because you shook their hand and you could see their name. Another rule that's broken all the time is fear RP. If somebody is aiming a gun at your head and you decide to start running away or start dancing, that is classified as fear RP because that's not something you would do in real life. And if there are three or more people aiming guns at your head, you have to comply with their demands. And then there's power gaming. If you're aiming guns at them and they start running around in circles and doing all this crazy stuff and even start punching you or trying to kill you or taking a gun out and try shooting you while you already have a gun aimed at them, that is power gaming and you can get in a lot of trouble for this as well. These are the type of things you definitely don't want to do. Here's another big one that gets broken all the time. VDM, where it's a vehicle deathmatch. You start ramming your car into random people, even when they're saying stop or whatever, you're not allowed to do this at all. And if you catch somebody doing this or somebody's doing it to you, this is when you want to have your body cam rolling. All you have to do is save the body cam and issue a report on them and they will have to serve some time in prison. And the last one is going to be fail RP. This is something you definitely don't want to do either. Let's say you kill somebody and they start talking while they are dead on the floor that's not RP whatsoever. If you catch somebody doing this or you are doing it yourself, then obviously you can be reported or you can report them right away and they'll have to serve some time in De Morgan as well. Another rule for all of the servers is no foreign languages in green zones. You can see we're in a green zone right now and we're in an English server. If you start speaking any other language in a green zone, you will get in trouble. You can speak whatever language you want outside of green zones. <laughs> Like, subscribe, and then I'll probably see. Once again, this is a rule you definitely don't want to break, and there's nothing against you if you speak another language. Honestly, I think it's kind of dope, because I can only speak one language, so if you could speak more than one, that's honestly pretty cool. Just make sure you don't do it in a green zone. Once again, every single one of these rules and a lot more can be found in the Grand RP Discord, so make sure you check it out, and you can also see exactly what punishment you will get for each of these rule breaks. Be sure to check it out down below. Now back into the fun stuff. Let's say you guys want to join an org, head on over to the Grand RP Discord once again, and you will see in Gov Announcements, there are all these different types of orgs you can join. EMS, National Guard, LSPD, and things like that. Once you find one that you want to join, go ahead and join it. And it should say somewhere on the left side, apply here. All you have to do is click it, and then just make sure that you qualify and you're following the requirements, and then you will see a form for an application you have to fill out. Once you fill it out, someone will get back to you from within the org within 48 hours, and they will let you know if you were accepted or denied. If you were denied, you have to wait about a week before you can reapply again, and then hopefully you get into the org that you want. Now, if you want to join a gang, things get a little more complicated and a little more dangerous. If you want to join, you have to either go to their HQ, either Marabunta, Bolas, Bloods, Families, or Vagos, and hopefully someone there can invite you or find one of their members throughout the city and then maybe they will invite you depending on your experience and how much you know. Obviously they will train you, and of course with all orgs you can rise up through the ranks and start earning some more money, get access to cooler vehicles, and maybe even a leadership role if you're good enough. Don't forget, the second you enter the ghetto, all the rules change. Once you're here, people can just start killing you. They can rob you and all kinds of stuff like that. So you want to make sure you're careful when you're here, and I would highly recommend staying in your cars. There is a map in the Grand RP Discord which tells you the exact locations of where the ghetto boundaries are. So be careful you don't accidentally enter it and start roaming the streets because you could end up getting murdered. In order to do a lot of stuff, you're obviously going to need a weapon. If you make your way to any of the gun stores, you could purchase guns, but you will need a license from the government building, which can be identified by the American flag on your map. Now the guns and ammo here are fairly expensive, and if you don't want to pay that amount of money, you can make your way over to the black market. When shopping at the black market, you don't need anything except cold hard cash. You don't need to be a certain level or anything like that, you can just make your way right over here and start buying some illegal items. Obviously things will be sometimes expensive and other times it'll be fairly cheap, but this is where I usually go if I want to buy some revolver ammo or some AK-47s or some AK ammo and stuff like that. You can find all kinds of illegal items here, and if you speak to the guy that's standing 
happening right over here, you'll actually be able to rent a shop yourself and start selling some of your own illegal items if you decide to start producing them at a bunker. You guys might have just seen it there, but at the bottom of my screen it said I had amnesia. Every hour there is a chance for you to get amnesia, food poisoning, or a cold, so be careful. And if you want to cure that, all you have to do is head to EMS, there will be some doctors standing by, just say that you want to be healed up or you need a pill to cure your disease, they will take a look at you to make sure you're not just lying and just trying to get some drugs, and then they will sell you a pill. And if there's no doctors there, you can go and talk to John Smith right behind the desk and he will sell you some of those items, but for a slightly higher price. By the way, I forgot to mention one other rule, anti-AFKing. That's where you're using an auto clicker or something like that to make your player move every minute, every second, or every five minutes, just like I'm doing right here. If you're caught doing this, you will receive a Demorgan and you'll be kicked from the server. Obviously, you're able to join back right after, you won't lose any progress or anything like that, but if you continue to do it, you will receive harsher punishments. And if you see somebody doing this, or you see somebody kill you or something like that, just do what I did. Flex your M muscle, click contact administration, and then you guys can put in a little note saying exactly what they did. And if you can, state their ID as well, because when you're contacting an admin, it is OOC, which means out of character. If anybody ever comes up to you and says, hey, OOC speaking, that means they're talking out of character. And if they say, I see, that means they're talking in character and role playing a scenario. As I mentioned earlier, if you flex your K muscle, you can have access to your phone. There's a bunch of cool stuff you could do on it. Like for example, crypto. You could buy it, sell it, or exchange it with people. Over here, we have the Forbes magazine where you could see all kinds of different interesting stuff like the richest people in the city, the most interesting photos, top shooters, and things like that. There is also the social media platform Ingrand where you could post pictures and put captions of things you're doing in the city. To take a picture, just select the camera and then click space to take a picture and then you could select upload to Ingrand, and then you guys can go ahead and select a caption that you wanna put on it as well. You can also go down here and select the events tab. Every once in a while, you will see an event pop up. You just click the events, and then you can go ahead and join it right here or set a destination to where it takes place. Next, we have the gifts. This is where you can enter a promo code or invite friends to the server. Here's a promo code you could use right away. Sorry, that'll give you a couple thousand dollars. Next to that is the bank. This is where you could pay for houses, your phone, your business, or your payments of fines if you get a ticket. You can also donate money to charity if you feel like doing that to clear some of your karma. Next, we have the auction, which is really awesome. Every day at 2030 in game time, you're able to start bidding on different things in the auction, like houses, businesses, family businesses, and other cool clothing items, which is awesome. There's a new auction every single day with a bunch of different cool items, so make sure to check it anytime you have a chance. Next to that is the settings where you could change your background, your sounds, and turn on do not disturb if you feel like it. Next to that is the ads where you can post an ad to Life Invader, they will publish it to the city and people can start contacting you. Like if you want to buy a business, you want to buy a house or some seeds, all you gotta do is put the ad out, pay a thousand bucks, and then people will start contacting you about the ad. Next to that is the help settings where you could just pretty much click it and then if there's any questions you have, most of the time they will be answered right here. Another important one is the navigator found right over here and you can pretty much just set it destination point to wherever you need to go on the map. All you gotta do is select what you want to look for. So if you want the GPS coordinates to the National Guard or to the government building or to the hospital, all you gotta do is select it and then it'll set a waypoint directly to where you need to go. And finally in the bottom right corner you have the investments where you can invest some of your money and you will guaranteed get it back at the end of the day or in a certain amount of hours. I would recommend doing the long-term investments but just be careful because it does take a long time and if you don't want to tie up too much money then I wouldn't recommend doing it. I did the 500 hour one where you put five million dollars in and you get an extra five million dollars back after 500 hours. It does take a while though. If your car ever runs out of gas, just head on over to any of the gas stations, flex your e-muscle, and then fill up gas in the tank. You can also put premium fuel in to make your car a lot faster, but it will cost a lot more money. You can also purchase repair kits and canisters just in case your car gets damaged or you run out of gas while you're driving and there's no gas stations nearby. There are also 24-7 stores. When you walk inside, you can talk to the guy in there and you can purchase a bunch of different stuff. For example, a SIM card so you have a phone number, or a backpack so you can carry more items, or a map of the city, or a pickaxe so you can start mining, or a fishing rod so you can go fishing. You can also get fireworks, lottery tickets, ticket tables so you can sell lottery tickets, pool tables, flowers, binoculars, dice so you can gamble, solar panels so you can make batteries, and a bunch of other really cool stuff. Really quickly, I'm gonna go over some basic locations. This right here is the auto fair. This is where you could sell your own cars. Right here is the real estate agency where you could sell houses or bid on houses that aren't on the auction. This is a barber shop where you can get your hair cut. Right over here is the beach market where you could sell your clothes and things like that. Just to the right of that, we have a tattoo parlor where you can get some tattoos. Over here is an electric charging station where you could charge up your electric cars if you need to. Over here is the docks where you could spawn in your 
your boats. And then next to that is the gas station where you can fill up gas in your boats. Just up the road, we have construction sites where you could start working as a construction worker and make some pretty damn good money. Any of the logos you see with a money symbol in the middle of it is a bank, and any of the cash symbols is obviously an ATM. FIB is located right here with the big F, LSPD is located right here with that little sign right there, and then right here is where you can pick your car up if it gets impounded or stolen for a fee. Right over here is the bus depot where you can become a bus driver, over here is EMS where you can get healed and that's where you spawn if you die, right here is the stock exchange where you can purchase and sell stocks, and then up the road from here, these little things are the drug labs. I really wouldn't mess with them unless one of your higher up family members tells you because you could rob them and make a bunch of money. That's obviously the car dealership, and then we have another tattoo parlor right over here. Here. We have the casino right here along with the Diamond Casino bar. There's more bars throughout the city as well. This is where you become a taxi driver. There's three different locations. You can do that throughout the city and there's obviously a bunch more stuff. I'm not going to go over every single thing, but I went over some pretty important stuff. If you guys want to check it out, all you got to do is open up your map and you will see a legend on the right side and then you can just scroll through everything and take a look at all the kinds of crap that you could do in the city. I know this video went on for a fairly long time, which I do apologize for, but at the same time, we want this server to be top tier. We don't want to see any bullshit and we don't want to see people getting banned, especially if they spent their own hard-earned money on a game and they get banned afterwards. I think all the stuff I mentioned in this video is some stuff you definitely want to know while playing in this game, and there's a lot of people out there that already played Grand RP and have been playing for a couple of months and don't even know half the stuff I mentioned in this video. So if you're new to the server and you just watched this video and you understood everything I said, you're going to be better off than probably about half the people that are currently in the server right now. Anyways, hopefully this video helped you guys out, and with that said, I will catch you guys in the next one.